dudas, algo que los argentinos conocemos trágicamente demasiado bien, aunque parezca un contrasentido, que es la crisis de las deudas soberanas, la quiebra de los países. Lo que nos pasó a la Argentina en el año 2001 es lo que está pasando en Europa. The majority today in the United States and in Western and Central Europe is a hopeless situation. It's a hopeless case. There's no validity in the predominant trends in opinion in those populations. The world today is filled with tremendous confusion and uncertainty. The so-called Arab Spring now appears to be descending rapidly into what the Russian foreign minister Sergei Lavlov referred to as a possible nuclear winter. The European Union is on the verge of disintegration and the United States has just re-elected the president who has been openly and audaciously violating the United States Constitution and who will continue to play the same old game as long as he's allowed to be in the White House. In the time of crisis, the people all across the board demand the real change. But what are they actually asking for? What kind of change are they prepared to accept? Around the turn of the century, the world has experienced a series of economic downfalls, such as Asian crisis in 1997, Russian GKO bond crisis in the following year, and the collapse of the dot-com Y2K bubble in 2000, all of which exposed the vulnerability of the entire speculative system of globalization. However, the real changes had yet again slipped through the cracks by the original 9-11 attacks and a corresponding paradigm shift with the introduction of an imperial doctrine that came to be known as global war on terrorism. The whole world was supposed to take sides, the side of the free nations led by the United States and Great Britain, or the Islamic states that were embracing terrorism, according to the oligarchical rule of the game. The economic crisis of Argentina, triggered on December 2001, has occurred in the world that was in dire need of alternatives. This so-called default crisis of Argentina has pushed the nation to the edge of a fatal cliff. It was not a mere economic crisis for Argentina, but it was an existential one, given the rapid foreign interests dominating the nation since the massive privatization drive in the 90s. There were only two options. One was to liquidate the majority of the nation's assets in order to pay the defaulted debt to all the creditors all over the world such as the IMF. The other option was to reorganize the entire economic system by breaking the accepted frame of references and by reviving the concept of the sovereignty through protectionist measures. Yo creo que el problema no reside en el problema de los granos, yo creo que el problema reside en el sistema financiero. Los mercados financieros hoy están en los commodities y conviene en los commodities. Mañana, eh, eh, pasado mañana están en el petróleo, según cómo vaya el petróleo. Eh, pasado, y pueden mañana dedicarse a, a los mercados de caramelos, si realmente tienen posibilidades de obtener un peso más sin trabajar, sin producir y sin invertir, para perfectamente especular. Por eso nosotros estamos sosteniendo que el verdadero problema es la falta de regulación de los mercados financieros en el mundo. Si nosotros hacemos planes de ajuste, si la gente no puede gastar plata, si la gente está endeudada en el más del 100% de sus posibilidades, yo quiero que alguno me diga, desde Adam Smith, desde David Ricardo, desde Keynes, si no les gusta para alguno más de izquierda, de Carlos Marx, ¿cómo vamos a hacer para que vuelva a crecer la economía si no hay consumo? Si el capitalismo es eso, que la gente consuma y que ustedes, los empresarios, produzcan y vendan cada vez más. Este es el tema, esto es lo que está fallando. O sea, lo que estoy proponiendo, ¿quién me habría visto de mis épocas universitarias ahora? Eh, 
estoy proponiendo volver al capitalismo en serio, porque esto que estamos viviendo, señores, no es capitalismo. Esto es un anarcocapitalismo financiero total, donde nadie controla a nadie. Y para finalizar, si uno ha probado ya durante tres años determinadas medicinas y con determinados médicos y el enfermo se agrava cada vez más, ¿no será que habrá que cambiar de médico y de medicinas e intentar otro tratamiento? Esta es una cuestión de pura lógica. Intentar resolver los problemas eh, de la misma manera con la que fueron originados, decía Einstein, que es de gente no demasiado cuerda. Déjenme que esta vehemencia es un poco la pasión y las ganas, y las ganas de solucionar los problemas. Muchas veces hay que afectar a intereses, eso sí, que esta es la otra gran definición y con esto quiero terminar. Es cierto que muchas veces para solucionar determinados problemas hay que afectar intereses e intereses que son muy poderosos, pero yo me atrevo a decir que es mejor enfrentar esos intereses minoritarios pero poderosos antes que más adelante enfrentar la furia de la sociedad. As Argentina continues to gain momentum through its successful debt restructuring and the public investments into national program such as Atucha II, nuclear power plant completed in 2011, and the historic launch of the Argentine satellite SAC D Aquarius in collaboration with NASA, the opposition has grown more fierce and desperate internationally. One of the most blatant assaults on the nation of Argentina has taken the form of the vouchers. While 93% of all the bondholders from the era of the crisis have accepted the debt restructuring and the massive cuts, 6-7% of them have been demanding that Argentina pay them in full with the interest. Elliott Capital Management, a hedge fund owned by billionaire Paul Singer, is a case in point. Singer purchased the Argentine bonds at pennies on the dollar at the height of the crisis and refused to participate in the restructuring of 2005 and 2010 so that he can make a fortune by means of extortion at the expense of the entire nation of Argentina. On October 2012, NML Capital, a Cayman Islands-based hedge fund tied to Elliott Management, made a Ghanaian court issuing an order to detain an Argentine flagship Libertad docked at the Ghanaian port of Tema. Despite the fact that the vessel, as a military asset, is protected by immunity granted by the Vienna Convention, Libertad has been forced to remain at port indefinitely. Singer demands that Argentina pay $20 million in order for the ship to be released. At the same time, NML Capital managed to get New York judge Thomas Grisa to order Argentina to pay the vouchers the sum of $1.3 billion. This ruling was immediately denounced by the Argentine officials as well as those who are part of the restructuring, such as Bank of New York Mellon, and those currently holding the restructured bonds. The financial minister, Herman Lorenzino, called this ruling a form of judicial colonialism and vowed never to pay the vouchers. This case reveals the nature of the present global situation. What kind of world are we living in today in which one man is allowed to threaten an entire nation by mobilizing legal courts all over the world in order to seize any asset that belongs to that nation? A simple fact is that the British Empire still exists and operates as it's always been from the standpoint of destroying the sovereignty anywhere in the world. This case also exposes the painful truth that the former colonies of the British Empire, such as Ghana, formerly known as the Gold Coast, are still being subject to the colonial rules and exploited by the same global networks to this date. Since the paradigm shift in the Argentine politics with Nestor and now Cristina Fernández de Kirchner, the nation of Argentina has become the leading voice in the world against the present hyperinflationary economic policies continued by the transatlantic regions of the world. 
But the history tells us that the imperial interests will never be satisfied. The British Empire, after all, has no permanent allies, only permanent interests. Therefore, we must bring ourselves up to speed in order to become the necessary leadership that is lacking throughout the world today.